comes to do what he loves, only him can save the lost. He comes to seek the lost. People fall, but he never fall away. But no bite is part of the world, if you live on a farm in the rural areas, the roads are not tired. It's a dusty road, very dusty road. In fact, many times if you are driving on that our road, <laughs> the color of your car will change because of the dust. And if you happen to be walking on it or you are riding on a, a motorbike, we, we would normally habitually put something on our heads, something like you with know, a white beard. I would be careful to cover my, cover my white beard or else it will be filled with dust and you don't want that if you are going out. So it's a very dusty road, it's a farm road. But on that day, an incredible thing happened. Suddenly, the king descended and stood on that dusty road. Yes, I know, somebody says, oh no, it could not be false. No, it's not, it's real. But because the Bible says that when he comes again, all eyes shall see him. But I want you to know that he, Jesus is, he visits the world often, as often as he wants. He's meeting with people. The testimonies are everywhere of encounters with the king. It's just that in these visitations, he's only seen by one or two as he wants people to be seen. You see, because it is not yet that day when he said, all eyes shall see me. And that will be the end, that will be the rapture. And he's coming again, as the Holy Spirit says, that is the most important thing for everybody to remember, that Jesus is coming again. But my experience and testimony is that Jesus comes, this is the earth. But this time, not everybody sees him, just a few. Like that evening, I could see him as he stood on that dusty road. That first of all took me by surprise. I said, Lord, how could the King of Kings descend and stand on that dusty road? As he stood on that road, he began to head for the nearest rural village. You know, the, the village is about nine kilometers from my farm. The closest settlement to my farm is four kilometers on this side and about nine kilometers on that side, you see. So he was going to that place. So I asked, as he was going, I said, Lord, where are you going? Then I heard the Holy Spirit speak from behind me because the Bible says you, you will hear a voice behind you say, this is, the, this is the way, go in that way. So I heard the Holy Spirit say, he's going to do what he alone can do. And I wondered about that. I still wonder about that. You see, and I remember what the Bible says in, in the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 10. He said, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So I was astonished. He's still doing it. He's still visiting to save the lost. Jesus of Nazareth, the same one who, 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 who came in the flesh, died on that gory cross. He rose again on the third day and ascended to heaven 
in the, in the plain sight of not everybody, but the ones he chose to see him ascend, those early disciples. So I said, Lord, where are you going to? It's the Holy Spirit said from behind me, said, he's going to do what he alone can do. He's going, he's still saving, seeking, searching for the lost to save them. Anyone who will call on his name, the Lord Jesus is still coming. He will come and he is coming to save, to do what he alone can do. I can only say to you, my friends, please, don't ignore this. Don't ignore it. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will come. He may, he, 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 he may, you may not see him. I cannot say, I cannot guarantee that you will see him. You know, but I know he will come. I know he will. Because the Spirit said he comes to do what he alone can do. So I was astonished as he, as he stood on that earth, brown earth, dusty road and began to walk with majesty, but he was on that road towards the nearest village, I said in my heart, Oh God, what a difference. First of all, I thought about the kings, the, the presidents of nations. I was thinking about the, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at that time. I said they would never, ever come to visit people in, their, in the rural areas. They are in palaces. They live in palaces. They wear silky clothes. I mean, they, they don't, they, in fact, I heard some of them say, no, no, we are different. We are the, you are, those are the people, this is us, we are the best in the land, and so on. A director of one of those ministries. I said to myself, oh, these people have no leaders, and actually, the Lord said it. These people have no leaders. But I don't think it's only in Nigeria, it's everywhere. I, do, how many kings visit their people in rural areas? These are forgotten people. These are ignored people. And they just hear about it. Not on top of a, 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 an interior rural village where the road is so dusty, people, nobody comes there. Except you have a business like me, it's my home, it's my farm. But there was the king. I said, Lord, there is no one like you. You are the king of kings and the lord of lords. Yet, see how he walks on the road. The Spirit said, he, there, there's, then I understood one thing that day. There is nothing he will not do to save and heal those who will only call on his name. There is no way, there is no death he will not enter to save and heal anyone who will only call. And that's what Jesus is saying, call upon me. You see, because he will not force his way. I saw something happen one day, talking about saving the lost. I want to share this, this vision I had about that. In that vision, there was this man, I, I kept preaching the gospel to him, and I should strengthen that again, Lord God, have mercy. I kept preaching the gospel to this man, but he didn't seem to be able to understand or even hear. You know, he just kept looking downwards and he kept doing what he was doing. He was just dead, to put it mildly. The truth of the matter is that anybody who does not have Jesus, who, who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, is, is spiritually dead. They are unable to respond. You know, it's true that they are laughing, having fun, moving all about the place. But look, spiritual awakening is a, is a, is, is a must for everybody, for you to be able to enjoy life. So I say to you, my friends, believe the gospel. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, but on that day, as I was preaching and saying, look, receive, accept Jesus, he just could not respond. Then suddenly I saw the king by my side because I was groaning in my spirit. I was groaning. Probably it was that groan, that intercession. And I want to say to all of you who pray, who know how to pray, pray for the unsaved. Pray for the unsaved. Don't just, you know, just be going like that. The Spirit of God says expressly, pray for the unsaved so that they don't die and go to hell unnecessarily. Because the king will go to any length he will enter any home. He will enter any, even the most interior rural place like it happened that day. He will go there to save and to seek the lost. I said to you, so suddenly the king was by my side and I could see from the corner of my eyes. You know, I didn't tell my this part at that moment. I could see right from the corner of my eyes. And as I was saying, be saved. So I understood. When the Spirit of God said, he, come, he has come to do what He alone can do, there is nobody who can do it. I saw it that day. Suddenly the Lord Jesus approached that human, that 
that day even day, though he was working, he was working in his office, he was playing sports, he was going, he was working in the garden, doing all these things, but he was literally dead. If he dies today, he goes to hell. But nobody should die. Just come. And so the Lord Jesus did a strange thing. He picked up that person, that, that, that man's spirit, because he made us. So he can reach into any human being and bring out the spirit. There's nothing you can do. You may, you may not even be aware of it. You see, that is just how it works. You may not be aware. What could, have, what could it would just seem as if you, you just slept off, or it was just one second, you know, because he is the Lord. <laughs> All things are possible with him. But he just took out that spirit. If somebody might just be walking on the street, the Lord Jesus can just take out the spirit and finish what he's doing in the twinkling of an eye. And you will not even notice. But somebody says, Jesus, ah, I believe. You see, that's how it works. So he took that spirit and then he laid his spirit, allowing me to see so I can tell you. He laid that spirit on the, on, on, on the surface, lying down. All right? A human being, maybe a big man, boastful, he was just lying there, you know, like a dog. We are all the work of his hands. And then he began to do what I saw, what I call a spiritual surgery. He opened that spirit. You see, because it is about the spirit. He opened that spirit and I saw that the spirit has veins, just like the, the human body has veins, but not like the human bodies. It's more, it's more colorful. I saw all kinds of colors like rainbow inside that spirit. And they were big, they were, they, were, they were just like big wires, just going, you know. And so, the, the, the king of glory reached inside that human spirit and did play what he alone can do. No religion can do it. No devil can do it. Nothing else can do it. Past, present or future, he's the only one who can do this. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit said, he has come to do what he alone can do. You see, but he came in response to two things. One, uh, intercessory prayers for the dead fellow who thought he was living, yet he was dead. And secondly, if only you would call. And so the Lord, you know, like, a, like an electrician just put, you know, there was no light, everything went dead. The electrician came, connected the wires, and suddenly there was light. That's what happened. He just connected the wires. He knows where to go. He did it. So he connected the wires in the human spirit, in your spirit, in my spirit. He, he connected that wire. Then he, so he said to me, he said, Talk, tell him again. So I now said, Mr. Man, you need to believe. Jesus is God. Suddenly he, his eyes flung open. He said, I believe. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, except He comes to do what He alone can do. So that day He came to do what He alone can do. Maybe there was somebody in the road, that village, who was crying to God because people are suffering, people are passing through hardship. Maybe, and the King is so concerned about this. He's so concerned about his people suffering. He's going to punish all his leaders, you know. You know, people are everywhere. They are. The civil unrest, and instead of leaders to listen to their people, some of them are threatening them, and some of them are even going as far as killing them. Look at what just happened in one of these countries. We understand in Bangladesh, they were they were they were rioting, and hundreds of their people are dead. Police and army shooting people are saying these, these leaders don't know what they are doing. The Lord is going to punish them severely because many of those people they are killing are going to hell. Look at the war that is going on in Ukraine and Russia. You better stop. And the United States and, and, the, and the European Union, they must not facilitate this war for any, for any funny reason. It's time to end that war because people are dying. They're already dead. And most of them are going to hell. The king is very angry with these leaders. But not with you. Because that day, as, he, as his feet touched that dusty earth, I knew, I said, Oh God, there is no one like Jesus. You will know, you see, he begins to solicit this song. So when we sing, it is spirit to spirit. He comes to do what you may know can do. He comes to save the lost. He Say
He's the best person. He's the best friend you can ever have. And I know one thing for sure. If you call him, he will come. It is a promise that he made. Nothing can stop him. No devil. An angel could have stopped Angel Gabriel as he was coming down, you know, on that day when the Lord sent him to take a message to, to Prophet Daniel. But he, 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 this one, <laughs> when the king is coming, all the devils run away. So he will come. Forget it. And nothing will hinder him. Only call today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. How, do you, how can you guarantee that you will still be alive today? All you need to do is a simple act of faith. Lift up your hands. Say, okay, Lord Jesus, I want to meet you. I want to know you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. That's all you need to do. He will come 100%, I'm sure. You may not see him, but I know he will come to do what he alone can do. The king is, the king is extraordinarily marvelous. He is wonderfully glorious. There is no one like him. He will, you, you, when, when you allow him coming come in by calling him, you too will be singing this song that I you know your own song, but this is the song that bubbles in my spirit. And not only that, you will fulfill what the king said. I love you and you love me. This is all that matters. And that is all that really, really matters. Thank you for listening to me. Please act today. Call the king, he will come, no matter where you are, in the deepest pit, in that dungeon, wherever it is, call him, he will come. And I thank you, Father, we pray for your sake. Please help, save your sake. People are dying every day, great king. And I know that you are not happy with this, for it is written, God has no pleasure in the death of any. It is true, but it is still happening. Therefore, Lord, I, we pray for your sake. Please save them, forgive, 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 and heal your people. And those who will, who will, you will cause to call your name today because of this message. Please, Father, I know you will respond. There's no doubt about it. Thank you for saving. Thank you for what you did in that old village that day. Thank you for what you did in the life of that man who, 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 who came to accept and accept you as Lord and Savior correctly, rightly, after you performed that surgery. Please do the same surgery in all of us. And thank you, Lord, for not getting tired of seeking the lost. We really, really give you glory and praise. Thank you so much. So, my dear people, thank you for listening to me. And then, the Lord bless you. Bless your family. Bless everything you do abundantly. Amen.